Hello? 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 Oh, hi, guys. Uh, thanks for coming for this presentation. My name is Peng. I'm the one of the maintainer and co-founder of Hyper. Uh, so uh, it was supposed by my uh, co-founder to present this, but I uh, took it from him and I changed the title. So <laughs> I tried to make the best presentation from here to make something interesting to you guys. So Hibernates build a, a, a public container service without infrastructure. And today I'm going to talk, this is the agenda, I'm going to talk about what we are doing in the container service today and what's the problem of that and what's Hyper and how we can use Hyper to build the next generation of container service. And below is a, a diagram of the current uh, uh, public cloud space right now. You see the, the past platform as service and infrastructure service. But in the future, many believe that there will be the containers of service that make a bigger, uh, major part in the market. So um, what's the today? Um, the containers, uh, most of the container service is running on the infrastructure service today. And you have this uh, um, um, infrastructure service, which is NOAA. And on, on top of that, different uh, tenants need to build their different uh, um, bay of uh, VMs as a, a boundary for isolations for diff uh, across different tenants. And that introduced two problems. One is it, you need to pre-create a VM pool. And that means you need to do a lot of capacity planning. What's the instance type? Uh, what's the storage setup? And what's my uh, VPC or uh, SDN setup? And that alone, it doesn't make you any more competitive. Uh, you need to de define a lot of things before you know actually how much you're going to use. And another problem is like supposing you have a database container and a web containers, and maybe the database container require more memory and more disk space, but the web containers ask for more a higher CPU. So probably you set up different instant type for different containers. Then you probably know the scheduling result before you actually schedule it. Then the question is why you do another scheduling if you know where your container goes to, right? That's the fundamental problem. And the, uh, the third problem of that is it, uh, it, it results in a low utilization rate of your resources. If you do a scheduling within a pool, that means like you must have some uh, idle resource sitting there, whatever, how, how, um, whatever your algorithm is, uh, no matter how good they are. So there must be some uh, idle resource sitting there. And then another major problem is you got two layers to manage. One is the infrastructure. You still got the infrastructure service to manage the VPC, the SDN, um, the storage, the, the VM instance. And you got an application, which is a container to manage. You need to schedule them, orchestrate them, uh, doing the service discovery and the whatever you need to do. And basically, this idea is just to replace the VM configuration management into the, um, the cluster management. Uh, you need to manage your, the scheduler, the mesos, the Kubernetes, the swarm, whatever. And you need to nest it, your uh, container set in the lib network in your um, neutral network, right? You got the neutral VPC out there. And then you do a lib network uh, container as the in the uh, neutron VPC, and it's the double layer make you uh, really hard to build and manage and really hard to debugging. And also think about uh, the Ceph, the RBD stuff, and you're gonna use the because AWS already have the EBS volumes and how you do the persistent storage for the, your containers. You, you use flockers or some other persistent storage on top of your EBS volumes. It's still a double layer of complexity. Right. So what's hyper? Uh, we build Hyper as an open source alternative to the Docker runtime. It's a hypervisor agnostic uh, Docker runtime. allows you to create a VM uh, using the Docker image in sub-second. And the technique is a hypervisor plus Docker image. It allows you to run any Docker image with any hypervisor. Right now, we support KVM, Zen, and VirtualBox. We're working on the VMware integration, so probably can run um, using Hyper to run Docker image on your EXS host uh, uh, by the end of this year. So that's, that screenshot is how you can launch a Docker image with Hyper. So you do a Docker pool and do do Hyper run. But instead of launching a Linux container, you launch a VM instance in uh, something like 300, 200 milliseconds. But with the isolation of hypervisor, it's hard hardware enforced isolation. And uh, um, our test result uh, um, below is test result of two machines. Uh, a typical uh, server setup, it takes uh, 300 minutes and 50 milliseconds for a pod of image to launch. Uh, but on a, a lower um, configuration, like this is an ultra low voltage um, i3 CPU, it's like this big. Um, we can achieve like a half second to launch a VM. Uh, how it works, inside of the Hyper VM, it's still a VM, the, the white box is your physical host, and you put the Docker image into a physical drive, that's the, the, the blue box. And the gray box is a VM instance, so in the VM instance, there's no gas OS, there's only one microkernel. One microkernel. It's 
is not same something like a core OS, which is still a full uh, full OS. And the microkernel will start with uh, something called a hyperstar as a micro um, uh, init service. And the, the hyperstar will launch, will load the, the Docker image from your physical host into the VM instance and launch the application from there using a concept we call the pod, which is Kubernetes native concept. And we separate the different namespace using the mount the namespace. So each different uh, Docker image will now see each other's root FS to avoid the potential complication. And by combining both hypervisor and the Docker image, we achieve this result. So for native containers, it's weak of uh, isolation. You share a kernel. Whatever kernel problem there is, you might have the uh, exploit. But VM, on the other hand, is very strong. It's independent kernel. Hyper allow you to, sh to reuse the, the same uh, independent kernel, but with the, uh, yes, Hyper just let, let you reuse the independent kernel. And you can actually bring, bring your own kernel. For the portable, it's Docker is portable. The, you can run Docker image on any Linux distro. On the other hand, VM is not really portable. You cannot use a KVM image on VMware, right? But with Hyper, because we support multiple uh, hypervisor with, uh, by using the Docker image, so you can basically run Hyper uh, with any hypervisor with the Docker image. It's truly portable. And boot, boot performance, you can create a, v, a Linux container using something like 100 and 200 milliseconds. Uh, on the other hand, EC2 instance probably boot in seconds, in minutes, in uh, like one minute or two minutes. But Hyper allow you to achieve 200 and 300 minutes, which is really close to Linux uh, containers. And the image size, um, Docker image is about like tens of megabytes, hundreds of megabytes, that's all. Uh, but a, a full-blown VM is like a gigabytes, ten, tens of gigabytes. And on the other hand, uh, Hyper using the Docker image is still megabytes. And immutable, um, Docker instance, the, the Linux container launching with the Docker image is, instant, is uh, immutable. But a full-blown uh, uh, full VM is uh, suffering from the, uh, the configuration drift. You have to use a Chef and Puppet, or those kind of tools, to manage the configuration in the VM. And even you use CoreOS, there might, might be some like configuration drift over time. But Hyper, by, by removing the guest OS, we can achieve the same immutability as Docker containers. Uh, comparable means like uh, whether this allow you to you reusing your existing, uh, existing tool chain to manage the, 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 the runtime. Uh, with Docker containers, it's not really comparable. You have to build uh, your own management tools with, uh, uh, with containers. But uh, Hyper allow you to reuse some of the, the hypervisor management tools with Hyper. So it's uh, generally between the, the traditional VM and the Docker. Mature, uh, because we're using the hypervisor uh, technology underneath, so it's relatively mature than the Linux container right now. Uh, uh, bring your kernel, it means like in a public multi-tenant environment, you have to allow different tenants to pick their own kernel version and kernel module. With Linux containers, you cannot allow that because all the containers from different tenants share the same kernel version and same model. Uh, but with Hyper, it allows you the different tenants to run their different kernel module and different kernel version. That's, that's a major um, requirement for a public environment. And for the return of investment, if you're using Linux containers, you probably need to ask the question, where goes my existing virtual infrastructure? Where goes my existing OpenStack deployment? Should I throw them away or build another layer on top of that? Uh, but with Hyper, because it's using the same uh, like Cinder or Neutron technologies or hypervisor, you just can plug uh, Hyper into your OpenStack deployment and turn that into a container as a service. So it's achieved better uh, return of investment from that. Uh, so this is current what we see the current container service looks like. But with Hyper, I'm trying to propose a new way to building the container service. So instead of letting the user to doing the orchestration by their own, so we can move the, the orchestration engine to the, to, the, to the cloud base layer to replace something like Nova. So imagine you use Kubernetes or Mesos in, as a replacement Nova and using Hyper as a runtime so you can achieve this kind of like a deployment. The infrastructure is the application itself. There's no two layers. It's only one layer. And this is the, what we build called Hypernetes. It's a secure multi-tenant uh, Kubernetes distro. So um, we still use the Cinder and Neutron for the storage at the VPC at the SDN solution. But we don't use the Linux container, we use Hyper-VM as the runtime 
for both isolation and the easy of integration. And on top, on top, on top of that, we use Kubernetes as the orchestration engine instead of using Nova because Nova is more designed for the long-running stable workload instead of like the 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 the, uh, the fast provisioning uh, Docker workload. And that alone leaves you a, a really isolated public multi-tenant environment for the for developers. So uh, next, I'm trying to give you a little demo. I want to ask my uh, colleague Xu to give you a demo of the Hypernetis workthrough. Uh, I will show you the how it, how it works, and uh, <coughs> uh, different from Kubernetes, we are multi-tenant multi-tenancy system. So uh, there is uh, uh, there is three user in the in the system, and uh, the the right tab is the uh, is the uh, administration administrator, and uh, the the purple one is for for our demo, and uh, there is another one, is the, the yellow or green one. And uh, I will show you. I I have pre-created some uh, some OpenStack project and uh, neutral network and uh, and so on for the uh, for the convenience of the demo. And uh, then in the <coughs> then in the in the demo user. Uh, Yes, uh, this user is uh, as a normal user. He do not have the uh, have the authorization to to check all the project, and he only he can only see some uh, network belongs to him, and uh, there is no ten there is only only himself as the tenant, and no other tenant can can so. And uh, in, inside this, uh, we can we can launch some Kubernetes application here. I I will show you the. Uh, I will I will do the do the fo following steps. Uh, first, I will uh, I will create a Kubernetes namespace. It's the Kubernetes concept for the resource isolation, and uh, uh, we I will create a pod and the replica controller uh, in the inside the namespace, and create a service uh, to access all the all the pods, and uh, let's run see what happened. Yes. Uh, after the the creation, we can see there there is a uh, uh, one namespace is created, and uh, then uh, the first part is created, and uh, after that we use replica controller to let it re replicate it to three parts, and now you can see there is three parts running uh, just in uh, that already have six seconds and uh, three seconds. It's launched very very fast, and. Uh, and uh, at the end, we created the service, and uh, it shows it have the IP address, public IP address. As, uh, where is my mouse? Ah, uh, here. Here. Uh, we can try to access it. Yes, uh, it's created, and uh, I have actually have three uh, have all the, the three pods beh behind it, and uh, then uh, uh, we can we can I can show you the it works with Cinder. Uh, Uh, I will. I, what I will do is, uh, firstly, I will show you the existing Cinder Cinder volume, and then uh, create a, create a, uh, create a pod with the with the uh, with the volume, and uh, I will show you uh, the volume. Yeah. First, uh, as said, the the volume. Uh, I right at the top is the volume ID, and then create the <coughs> the pod with the volume ID, and 
volume ID here. Yeah, th this is the, the volume ID uh, we already created. And uh, then if we show, we have, a, an, have one, one more, one more part. And uh, after it's, uh, it's run, we can see uh, to the, use the DF, we can, we can see the, the, the volume is mounted here as we uh, expected here. Uh, so it's, it's already created. And uh, also from the, other, from the other user, you can, you can get, uh, try, to, try to show what the pod, uh, there's no pod. And uh, uh, there's another user, so there's uh, no, no NS. And, uh, and you can see this user, he can, yeah, he can only see the public network, and he can only only so only see his his own uh, tenant, and cannot so, so see others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Thank you. All right. So. Um, okay. What was it? Yeah. So as a sum up of this. Um, I think uh, what trying to do it here is more of a immutable infrastructure as a service. So imagine the diagram is a graph representation of your uh, cloud formation or heat templates, right? We got uh, uh, basically how to deploy the script here. And imagine you could replace the VM image with the Docker image in this script, and you end up with Hypernetes. And what's the difference is um, the new script will take sub second to provision to deploy. You can deploy a Hadoop or a Spark in milliseconds. And then you got lighter image to manage. It's not a QCO2, a VM image, take gigabytes, tens of gigabytes. You got a layer of hundreds of million uh, megabytes of Docker image, the, the typical Git like workflow of Docker to manage your images. So it's lighter and it's immutable. You don't have the l long running VM instance suffering from the configuration drift. You have an immutable instance. And if you want to replace that uh, instance uh, uh, to do the CDCI, it just takes milliseconds to launch a new one. And it, it requires minimal ops because it's immutable, and the, the, the Kubernetes offer you the service discovery, the replication set, all this uh, uh, failover and uh, uh, auto scaling capability built in in Kubernetes. So it's kind of like a bit merge of both paths and infrastructure service. And what's the last one is just enough cloud. It's like a if you using something like this, you have to pre-create a VM cluster. Then it's not just enough. You might need to pay more than you actually use. But with um, with something like that, you just need to declare how much resource you want to use for your application, and that's all. Let the cloud cloud provision the resource for you. So uh, it's just enough cloud. And uh, um, um, overall, we have been discussing whether we should call it container service or immutable infrastructure as a service. And uh, it's all, uh, all of this is open source. And we have our, our website here, our documents here. And uh, for Hypernetes, the new uh, Kubernetes distro, we are actually open source it today. And uh, uh, our plan is to building a public uh, like say container service based on uh, uh, Hypernetes by the end of this year in both New York and uh, California. Uh, we have the plan to uh, announce it by the end of the, the uh, sometime in December. And the GitHub repo is listed here. So um, that's all my uh, presentations. Uh, any questions you may, you may have? Go ahead. Uh, uh, I cannot hear you. Oh yeah, um, the question was why we choose uh, Kubernetes instead of Mesos or Swarm, right? Um, we are just fun of Kubernetes, I think. <laughs> um, I think Kubernetes provides more um, a facility to help the developer to model their applications in compared with Mesos, which is basically a resource scheduler. So um, it helps just the developer more than the other frameworks, and that, I think that's the reason. And it, besides, it's Google stuff, so. Yeah, we are fun of that. Excuse me?
Yeah, that's what Kubernetes does. Kubernetes is basically an orchestration engine for your, for your containers cluster, right? And uh, my point is we can re replace the Linux container's runtime with Hyper using the hyper hypervisor technology. Then you end up with the same runtime, same behavior, so you can apply both uh, hyper -natives, uh, Kubernetes on top of the Hyper clusters to manage your Hyper VM. It's, Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. F um, the question is like, uh, sh should you you use uh, continue to use your Docker image or manage your VM image? Right? Is that your question? OK, so your question is whether we want to only manage the Docker image or two images. Yeah, um, yeah. that's the point of uh, Hibernatus. You only use, need to use your uh, Docker image. You can build your Docker image on your laptop and push it to the Docker registry, and that's all. You don't need to use a CentOS or a CoreOS VM image here. Completely no. Because when the Hyperstar launch uh, only a microkernel, there's no VM. There's no VM image. There's no CentOS or Red Hat or, or CoreOS. There's only a micro standard Linux kernel in the Hyper VM. Yeah. Make sense? How, the question is how many uh, networks does Hypernatis? Yeah, um, as a user, as a tenant, you can create uh, as many as uh, as many namespaces as you wish, and each namespace is uh, a Neutron VPC underneath. Yeah. Right. Thank you.